guys, welcome to the latest episode of Digital for Everyone. I'm your host, Robert DeGans, and tonight's episode is going to be very special because I'm actually going to be the speaker tonight. We're not having anybody else on, so it's just you and me, right? And we're going to have a great time. We're going to learn about Facebook ads. Welcome, Alex Gibbon. You're the first one in. How are you doing, man? Sami Subaru, Valin G. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Tonight we're talking about Facebook ads and I am actually going to be the one doing the talking instead of doing the interviewing this, um, you know, this time. We're at Digital for Everyone. Every week we talk about how doing d digital right kind of um, can positively affect your businesses. Welcome, Keitha Oliver. All right. I'm just going to give you guys a few more minutes to join in. Right, but tonight we're going to cover Facebook ads, a very, very sort of to the point, very straightforward introduction to it. Um, a lot of the clients that I've worked with, both big and small, have sticking points and stumbling blocks just at this at this level. You know, a lot of them are still boosting ads. We're going to talk about why boosting ads, um, boosting posts, sorry, is is not a great way to go. Welcome, Stephen Taylor. It's nice to have some famous people in here. Ryan Olson, of course, is always with us. So, guys, tonight, tonight is going to be Facebook ads, right? Lanzi's Ryan Olson, welcome everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. So, the first thing I want to go into, well, actually, sorry, I'm not introducing myself. I'm Robert Degans. I have been in digital marketing for it's my 10 year anniversary now, and. I've done pretty much everything. I've done a little bit of everything. I've done social media management. I've done blogging. I've done emails. I've done um, website design. I've done a ton of different stuff. Welcome, How I Journey. Welcome, Brittany. Alex, you guys, stop getting distracted. Um, and one of the things that I found that over the course of the, the years that I'm working with, regardless of the company, um, social media and, and managing Facebook ads has sort of been the first stumbling block that a lot of people hit. Welcome Nissan Sales, welcome Amanda. Um, so first things first, a lot of people are still boosting posts, right? Purely from an economic standpoint, if you switch to ads, you're going to be five times more effective. I wasn't sure because I read it online and I decided to test it for myself. You get five times more reach for every dollar that you spend running an ad versus boosting a post, right? I mean, if that, that alone will give you a major benefit. Welcome, Jared. How are you guys doing? So how do you get started, right? The first thing to do to run ads is you get yourself on Business Manager. Facebook has great tools to manage everything to do with your content creation. You have Content Studio. You have, um, I think it's Data Studio as well. You have audience manager, you have tons of tools. So get yourself on business manager, right? Business.facebook.com. Head there first and set up your business profile. Welcome, I am Daniel Loveless. Um, yeah, Brittany, for sure. Definitely run ads rather than boosting. I mean, yeah, boosting is the quick and dirty way and it's an easy way to do it. Hey, Jamie. Um, but definitely run ads. Guys, please shoot your questions at me because this is going to be a very... Um, very, very um, flexible, flexible time. Hey, Carly, welcome, welcome. Carly's a, a one that we had here. Unfortunately, we had a bad connection and she did not, uh, we couldn't get the video up. Um, and once you're signed up on Business Manager and you kind of poke around there, I mean, there's lots of tools to learn. Facebook has tons of, um, of courses that you can do to get yourself more familiar, but I like to just jump in, right? You jump in and the first thing you want to know is what do you want to achieve? right the you know people just think well we want to sell stuff we want people to know about our products but you know even as much as and as much and as easy as facebook makes it for you to um, run your ads you still want to have a little bit of a strategy right so find out what you want to achieve is it are you set are you pushing for app installs do you want post engagement do you want people going to your website um, do you want leads? You know, that's actually a very important thing. There's, Facebook has introduced um, lead ads, which is a great way to generate custom leads for your company, right? I know I'm seeing a lot of Nissan sales. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of salespeople here. Um, leads actually help you filter out all of the sort of rubbish, 
right? Because not everybody who sends you a message is as valuable as a customer as the next one. Welcome, Laurie. Welcome, Cameron. Abisoon. Thanks for get, guys for joining me here, joining here tonight. I mean, if you guys have any questions, please interrupt me at any time. Just type it in the comments and I'll get to it. Um, so yeah, find out what you want to achieve and make it be very tangible, right? You want something that is not what we call in the, in the industry vanity metrics, right? Likes, followers, stuff like that. You know, the, I, anytime... If I was ever in a, um, a meeting and I said, yeah, yeah, well, you know, you got a thousand more likes, the CEO would always tell me, okay, how many likes in a sale, right? Now, whatever you're doing, at the end of the day, your end goal is sales. But because maybe you're, you don't have e-commerce set up or for whatever reason, you want to take it a step back and say, okay, what is a key performance indicator or KPI, right? Um, that tells you this person is really interested in my service or product. Um, you know, Valin is, is saying that ask key questions in your lead form to filter leads. That's, that's a great example. It's something I highly recommend because the lead form defaults to, and I was just going a little off track, but the, the lead form defaults to name, number, and email address. But sometimes you wanna know, um, <laughs> sometimes you want to know you know how much how much they make you, know, you can't actually ask that but you can get us a, uh, a fair idea of what what they're looking for so that you can kind of prioritize you know i'm sure that these the sales people out here are feeling it hard in covid and knowing how to prioritize your time on the most valuable um leads is going to be very important so you figure out what you want to achieve and then we go to something that a lot of people neglect but it is so valuable right who is your actual target audience? Welcome, Ashley Burnett, Ryan, Ryan Gibbon, welcome. Um, who is your actual target audience? Think a little bit further than age and gender. You know, think, where do you live? Where do they live, sorry. Um, get detailed, but this is very important, not too detailed, all right? So Carly, I'm gonna answer that question in a minute. I just wanna finish this point. Uh, the more targeting you add, the more expensive your ads become, right? The more expensive your CPM, your cost per milli, the cost per thousand people your ad reaches. Now, you want to get focused because a million impressions does you no good if it reaches the wrong people, right? Um, there are some brands who it doesn't sort of matter, right? For example, I always use this example, KFC is for everybody who has a stomach. So their targeting is literally everyone in the country. It doesn't matter because you're not that far from a KFC wherever you are. However, none of us here are KFC. So what you want to do is think, okay, we, you know, maybe I want to focus in on, maybe I'm only located in the, in the West. Maybe I'm only located in, in Chagra, uh, Shabonas and I don't, I don't really want to start trying to deliver to town and to South and stuff like that. So maybe you want to target there. So starting with location is a good thing. Um, you know, time uh, time of life in terms of if this person is a parent. You know, Facebook allows you to get that detailed, right? So if you sell stuff for new parents, you can target just them. It'll be a little bit more expensive, but it's worth reaching the exact people you want rather than spending all of the money. And yeah, I get, um, a th you know, a million impressions. Ismail, I know you are you are um. You're a KFC plant head sent here to distract me and I'm not going to take you on. So Carly, to answer your question, what's the real difference between boosting and doing ads? Now, that was a tough question for me because I've been asked that before and I tried to look at it and I just couldn't figure out, you know, what, what could you not do with boosting that you could do with ads? So Facebook has made it very, they're very similar. The main thing is the performance. Um, performance in terms of the reach and the efficacy as well as if you want to get if you want to level up your advertising really that is to me the difference because you know boosting you don't get the opportunity to use facebook pixel and conversion tracking and all these other stuff i'm not going to get into that that's this is that's sort of lesson two on facebook ads but definitely boosting it's just bare minimum. It's just like, we want more people to see this without super getting really, really good into the targeting. Um, <laughs> right, next. So 
the difference between creating an ad versus using a post. I actually had a client um, recently not understand that difference. So when you create an ad, that exists in the ad space. So that does not show up on your ta- your brand's timeline. However, it's just as easy to create a post and use that in your ad campaign. Facebook allows you to do that. You can switch between them. Now, the benefits and, and, and drawbacks are, are simply, um, if you use a post in your campaign, the engagement happens on that post and it stays on your um, on your timeline. So for example, if you have if you have a video that you want to show people, this is how my product works. Um, you want people to see the questions that are there. You want people to see the answers that are there. Um, so that that is to me the main difference between using an ad versus creating a post. Now there's no there's no really right answer to which one you should use. More of the you know one time over the other. Hey, welcome, Jamila. She's Jamila is going to be with us um, in a couple of weeks. And Carly, I'm going to get to that question right after I finish this, this point. So, yeah, so creating an ad versus using a post, it, it really doesn't matter. It's a preference thing. I like to use a post simply because it's a little easier than rebuilding an ad there. Um, yes, great. I'm glad I'm glad that makes sense, Ashley. Um, so Carly Communications is asking, so is boosting good for brand awareness then, or is it, or is an ad always better? I have found that um, boosting is again for for just I it's it purely just does not perform as well as the same campaign strategy run on an ad platform. I can't answer why it does that. Um, that's just Facebook making people you know spend more money, but. It is good for brand awareness. If you're just starting out and you don't know what else to do, boosting is fine. I'm not I'm not coming down on people who boost, but I'm saying that if you have the opportunity, you know, take what I'm telling you here tonight, set up your business manager account and say, take that same twenty dollars and make it go a lot further. Right? Um, a Bassoon was asking which option is more effective in generating sales. That's an excellent question, and it's actually going to be addressed in another. Um, in another state, in another point. So I'm going to come back to that. If I don't, please remind me. Hey, welcome, boss office supplies. Um, so the the thing I also want to point out is editing your placements, right? This is getting a little bit into the creative side, but Facebook has so many places where your ad shows up. So you have Facebook, you have you have the Facebook feed, you have Facebook stories. Welcome, Dr. Shenley. And welcome, Nikita Chiquita. You have Facebook stories, Facebook feed, Instagram feed, Instagram stories, and then they have a whole host of Facebook network sites where your ad shows up. The problem with that is that they're all different sizes. Some are big, some are rectangular, some are square, some are tall. The best and easiest way to sort of like check off a box of saying I've optimized is to make sure that you get, you use your ads with, you, you edit your placements. Right? I'm not gonna, I can't actually show you physically on Instagram how to do that, but there's an opportunity when you're going through Ads Manager that'll tell you, do you want to edit your placements? And simply put, if you put a square piece of creative and you put it on and it's showing on Instagram stories or Facebook stories, it's not going to look good because Instagram stories and Facebook stories are portrait. So when you're doing the creative, when you're getting your artists to do it, have him make two. It's not hard for him to resize it like that. It's not a problem. Welcome watching OTT, Sawi Loof, all the way out in Florida. Um, so edit your placements so your, your ads are a little bit more custom. They fit the place that they're going to be shown. Right? Um, now, this is where I think, <laughs> thank you, Stephen, where I think um, Abisun was asking about you know, how do you know which generates the most sales? People hate to, tell, to hear me say this, but I can't answer you that. I don't know because you need to test every single campaign, whether I'm doing it for, whether it's in the same category, whether it's in a different category, they always perform differently. So A-B testing is something I, um, ha, thank you, what you know, TT. A-B testing is something I believe in strongly, and it is simply literally that you run two different ads 
and you see which one performs the best. Because if you're not testing and tracking, you're not going to know what, what works well for you. And that's, that's another key thing that people don't, don't do. Even if you're boosting, you know, boost two different versions of the same thing. See which one performs better. You know, this is not a, um, it's not a scenario where you can only run one at a time. There are a lot of options for um, learning about your, your target audience. You know, there's so much data out there that ads, ads manager and business manager will give you. You know, demographic, time of day, you know, when is your, when are your people online? Should you only boost, um, should you only boost after lunch? Things like that. There's lots of strategies that you can employ once you know what's going on, um, how, how your ads are performing. Now, it's actually going to bring me pretty much to the, the last part of the introduction, which is test, track, learn, and test again. Um, one sec, I will answer, Sawi Lu, I will answer that question in a little bit. But the really, the key final point is that if you don't test, so we started with your KPIs, right? You want to know what performed, what success looks like to you, whether it's we got a thousand messages, we got a thousand comments, we got a hundred new leads, whatever it is, make sure whatever success looks like to you, you have that down in the beginning. Right, I'm going to recap all the points uh, very quickly at the end. But you, once you know what success looks like to you, you can then test your data. You say, okay, I think my target audience is X and Y, and we want to see how it works with that target audience. You look at the data, the data will tell you everything you need to know. Right? So test things, track them, and then you know, learn, learn from it. Take those learnings and test again. So just to answer, let's answer the questions. Savi Lusen says, I want to know how, to, how you choose your audiences. Do you A-B test your audiences as well? So I find that the, I perform sort of a, um, a funnel scenario with audiences because we do start fairly broad and we bring it in over time because we, the, the broader you start, you know, um, you know, okay, you can see everybody from 18 to 65, 65 plus. Um, Facebook has the largest audience between 25 to 45, and it's getting older because we're getting older. Um, but you see who's engaging. So you look at the audience, and you say, okay, this is the, this is the whole audience. And then you say, okay, this segment is, is um, the most engaged or really the most active in terms of, you know, where I'm likely to get a sale. So then maybe you reduce it in age. Then you can see things like, okay, men are responding better to this ad. Maybe I'll try an ad with a different um, emotive standpoint, things like that. Te like this goes back to the A-B testing. Test, test, test. There's so many things that you can test, right? Um, so I don't necessarily A-B test my, my audience. I run broad and I narrow it down as we go along as you see what works. Um, Valin was asking, what metrics do you think are most important when doing Facebook ads? So reach is definitely uh, one of the most important. There are, you know, impressions. Yes, it's, it's kind of important. That's a very broad metric. But I like to look at it from a, a, a funnel perspective. So from top to bottom in terms of an e-commerce um, scenario, it would be impressions at the top. Then you have engagement or clicks. Right, and you do track that with a click through rate as well. Then you have visits, so there's always going to be a slight difference between clicks and visits. Right, that has to do with things like um, you know, if your website loads too slow, things like that. So, so you go impressions, engagement or clicks, visits, and then what we would call conversions. Right, so a conversion for anybody would be very different. So, Dr. Shen Lee is a dentist, so a conversion might for her might be an appointment request. Um, Nissan sales might be a test drive request. Um, I know Brittany and Amanda, you guys deal with um, makeup, so that might be okay. Well, we want to place an order. So all of the, you know, that's what conversion means. Different things, to different people. But you kind of start from the top impressions, and you go all the way down. Um, Shannonly, I don't quite understand that translations of purchasing and engaging. But as I'm here and I'm talking about the funnel. This is how I approach fairly, it's a fairly 
I wouldn't say dumb, but it's a, it's a very straightforward way of figuring out where the problems are, right? So if you're spending, I don't know, a thousand dollars and you get, you're getting a lot of impressions, you know, okay, this part of the funnel is okay. If you're not getting a ton of clicks, you start to realize, okay, maybe, you know, the ads, if the ads are running fine and we're getting a lot of people to see them, why aren't people clicking? So then you realize, okay, the problem is probably by your ads. So your funnel should never too tightly narrow down too early. So you have your impressions, you have your, um, your clicks and engagement, things like that. And then you go, okay, if I'm getting a lot of clicks, but not a lot of visits to the site, maybe something's wrong with the site. Right? And then finally, if you're not getting a lot of conversions, you want to take a look at, okay, well, what are people doing when they come to my site? And this is, I know has gone way off of Facebook, but it's very important in the grand scheme of things when you're thinking about your strategy. Um, any questions, guys? I mean, I can get kind of specific. We have about 10 minutes left, so I can start to talk about industries and, and things like that. Oh, I see, no problem. So to recap, I know I look, some people join kind of late, um, Valine said, do you monitor cost per result? Definitely. So you want to drive down as much as possible your cost per, I just call it acquisition, whatever, whatever your KPI is that you start with, you definitely want to mo drive that down as much as possible, all while trying to test things. You know, you don't want hundreds of cheap leads. You want maybe 15 that are really good. So maybe it's worth paying more for those 15 than it is worth saying, okay, well, I got 75 cents a lead and you have a thousand leads to go through and most of them are garbage. So yes, you definitely monitor it. You want to figure out, uh, what I like to do is I look at international um, standards. So what is the average lead cost per lead for a car sale? And take a look at it from that perspective, but obviously understand that what happens in America, is totally different. Um, to what happens in Trinidad and Tobago. So you have you have to, got to take those figures with a grain of salt. But if you realize that, you know, it's $50 a lead for a car, 50 US a lead for a car sale in, in Trinidad, and you're spending 50, uh, in the US, and you're spending $50 a lead here, probably something's, something's not doing great. Mr. Alex Gibbon, how does this approach affect services versus goods? Um, I don't think they differ vastly. I mean, I know I know that you're a physio, so the the difference would really be being a little more um, discerning on how you target. Because, um, for example, services are are, are a need versus uh, well, I suppose goods goods can be a need as well, uh, but they kind of come up in in the process of. of living your life, right? You know, I might need somebody to wash my car, but I don't need them to wash my car all the time. So it's, it's small. It's, it's really to do with the AB testing and the, and the, how you would change your targeting to do, um, to, to facilitate your, your needs. Ashley, Ashley Burnett saying this was very helpful and insightful. Not, not a problem at all. I'm glad that this was, was insightful for you guys. So if anybody who joined late, I'm just going to recap really quickly. The first thing I want you guys to do is stop boosting ads because, simply because, running your, your ads on Ads Manager are five times more effective, right? Um, generally, I'll, I'll address that. Abe Bissoon is asking, how to determine whether your post is effective regarding retail goods when you can't necessarily track conversion? That's an excellent question. A lot of people are like, well, there's the disconnect between online and offline. So what, what we've tried to do is understand the limitations of digital in terms of, at least when we're reporting to a client and say, listen, I can't, I can give them a coupon. I can't necessarily know from there what they do with it. But if I say it's 5,000 um, coupons we gave out and you redeem 500, we know there's a conversion rate there that we can at least track. Um, so it's, there, there is that disconnect. There's actually a great point that you brought up that, you know, digital has its limitations. It has lots and lots of things that you can do with it. But at a certain point, we stop and we can't tell whether that ad or that post made that person walk into your, your business. 
right? Google Ads does work towards that, but it's totally a different thing that we're going to talk about. So generally, A-B testing is running two similar campaigns with purely one minor difference between the two of them. It could be a major difference, sorry, but there's one difference between the terms. Sometimes we will A-B test the same creative against male and female. Sometimes we'll, we will A-B test different creative. And when I say creative, I mean ads or, or images against um, our total target audience to see how they respond. Uh, a very interesting A-B test I ran earlier in my career was we were working for an insurance company and we were running some ads and we said, you know what? Let's change the background. We've been using a white background. Let's use a blue background. So we did the A-B test and found that people responded better to the blue background. And it, it took us nothing really except the effort to do a couple more um, bits of, 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 ad, uh, of, of ads to put up. And it's worth it because at a certain point, you're going to start making only marginal gains. And when you make marginal gains, these kinds of things matter. Yeah. Alex Gibbon was saying, services could have the source of information as part of a screening questionnaire. Sure, sure. You want to know um, how how they got how they came to your um, how they came to find out about your business. A lot of retail companies do that as well. Excuse me, guys. I'm having a drink. Right. So, recapping this stuff while you guys shoot questions at, at me. Boosting ads. Ads are five times more effective than. Um, a regular page boost, it's worth it just for that. It's going to stretch it all a lot further, right? Get yourself on Business Manager. Go to business.facebook.com, sign up. It's very straightforward and it is, will give you, it'll open so many more doors to testing and, and improving your, your ads, right? Before you start your ad campaign, figure out what do you want to achieve? What does success look like to you, right? That is understanding what a bassoon, um brought up that there are limitations to digital. If you don't have a fully fleshed out e-commerce funnel where you can track from post to sale, then you're gonna you're gonna be left with okay, well you know, what is a viable metric for me? You know, if if I'm promoting an event, is it the people who clicked going? You know, um, things like that. So think think about that really what is your what is your goal? What is what does success look like to you? Who is your actual target audience? That's a super important one because when you when you just broad, you know, we call it pay and um, pray and spray, spray and pray, right? When you do that, you just you, a lot of the money is being wasted on people who are not really interested in your stuff. So go beyond age and gender. You know, location is a great one, right? But again, you don't want to put too many specifics. You don't want to have five and six and seven because then you get so specific, it's gonna be so niche that it's gonna be very expensive to reach just those few people. Um, the key that I would suggest, two to three or, um, additions, and it's things like, it, it can be things as specific as being a parent, or things as, um, as sort of nebulous as maybe um, likes coffee, you know? These are, these are kind of behavioral stuff as opposed to like t state of life um, scenarios. Right? We want to get detailed, but not too detailed with your targeting. When you create an ad versus using a post, um, we went over this again, but I'll just recap it. When you create an ad versus using a post, the ad does not live on your timeline, whereas the post does. That's the key difference between using an ad and you creating an ad versus using a post as an ad. That's the key difference. They can both perform the same way. They can both do the same things. Right? Edit your placements. Your stuff that looks good on Facebook is not going to look good on Facebook stories or Instagram stories because the orientation of the artwork is different. Make sure you talk, speak to your artist and say, listen, I need, a, I need a horizontal and I also need a portrait so that I can run it on both. Um, you can find tons of tutorials on uh, guides, sorry, on the sizes for Facebook, so I'm not going to get into that here. It's be too much for you guys to write down, right? Um, an A-B test. Test, track, and learn, and then test again. You will only get better by looking at your data and what the data says and learning from that. Again, once you know what um, AB, what success looks like to you, then start to tinker with things. Try different stuff and see if that moves the needle. If it does, fantastic. And if you do it, do more of that. Um, 
Valin. Founded services tend to focus more on building brand awareness and products are more sales driven. So the objective of the ad may differ sometimes. Totally. Um, services. Yes, I think that was um, that was in response to Alex. Yes, definitely. So there is a part of, to play in awareness. And sometimes you just want to be, we just want people to know that we exist. Um, maybe you're a jet ski company off the top of my head and you know the weekend is coming up and you want people to know that they could rent jet skis you want to focus your advertising you want to say okay you know what we're going to advertise Thursday, Friday and Saturday from 6am till you know 4pm because that's when people are likely to be thinking about going to the beach and stuff like that whereas products you yeah you want to say this is where it is this is how much it costs and this is how, how to get it because nobody likes asking, you know, inboxing for price and nobody likes answering a million messages that say, hey, how much is this thing? And then arguing it with them over the price. So I hope that was a good introduction for you guys. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I like hearing the sound of my own voice, but we've <laughs> come to the end of, of this episode of Digital for Everyone. Right? It'll be soon. Definitely sales, sales, sales. Um, guys, thank you very much. If you have any more questions, please feel free to shoot me um, messages. For awareness campaigns, do you rec recommend any specific time frame? That's a good question. So we've found, and bear in mind I've been running uh, ads for longer than I care to remember, I found that by the time four to six weeks has passed, we see a performance drop off in ad creative people get um, blind to it. It's the same way when a new billboard goes up, you see that. But after two weeks, it's another part of the landscape, is the mountains. So after about four to six weeks, ad creative starts to reduce in effectiveness. It's not totally ineffective, but it becomes more ex expensive. So um, I would say aim to change creative every six weeks, but one of the key things we used to do is have actually three ads running at any one time. And every two weeks, we would check, well, uh, every six weeks, we would check which one was performing the worst, take that one out of rotation, and then just add in a third one. So that would ease up the effort on the artist who didn't have to create a, a brand new campaign each time. And then you're there like, well, I need this campaign to run and I need it tomorrow, but the guy's not ready. So having um, multiple sets of creative helps out everybody. All right. RBD Productions, you've joined in just a little too late. We are wrapping up right now. Guys, thank you again for joining me and listening to me talk for half an hour. As always, we will be here every, um, every Thursday at 8 p.m. until I run out of internet. So until then, guys, keep doing digital great, and I'll see you next week.